All right, peace and abundance, everybody. Welcome back. Market Review, Tuesday, July 19th. MJ, the mastermind here, got TMG family with us. So we're going to talk about the market. You know, this is Market Review. This is your first time here. You know, we talk about the market. We talk about, you know, technicals, fundamentals, earnings, economics, headlines, you know, everything in between, right? So tap in with us Monday through Thursday, 5 p.m., you know, um, orchestra recording back on YouTube, right? Um, you know, if you want to join live, link is always in the bio, MJ the Mastermind or the Mastermind Group LLC on Instagram, right? So yeah, you know, we we got Netflix today. Netflix is up, nice in the after hour session, right? Um, you know, we got the Twitter decision that you know, um, I know, I think Elon wanted to push the the court date back but you know the judge ruled in twitter's favor those are some of the main headlines for today and um we're gonna jump into it let's start with the affirmation of the day right we can't move forward without that you gotta set the vibes you gotta set the energy right so today's affirmation is i attract all that i want need and desire i attract all that i want need and desire so let's continue to carry that energy you know, have that belief, you know, repetition, continue to say it, which is say it to yourself, write it down, you know, put that energy out. As y'all see, I got the peace and abundance, you know, from head to toe, you know what I'm saying? T-shirts coming out soon, hats coming out soon, All right? So stay tuned. I know y'all gonna support, All right? So Revenge of the Bulls, man, you know, that's already Revenge of the Bulls part two or part three. You know, that's definitely going to be the name of this episode. Bulls came back strong today, right? Bulls came back strong. We were cutting through supply. We're still technically in supply, but, you know, we were making a strong move, you know, uh, back up. We broke 3,900. Um, you know, we ended up closing. I mean, right now we're at 3,945, right? Um, so strong move by the Bulls, man, but I'm not scared, man. Like, I, I still feel confident in my thesis, y'all. Like, I really do. Like, I don't see this playing out. I mean, we could get the 400. 400 is a possibility. But, you know, it just looks like a bear flag to me. You know, we are squeezing on the, on the EMAs. Um, but I think this is just a trap. I think it's just a, I think this is just a bull trap, y'all. But, you know, everybody got their own opinion, right? Like I always say, do your own research, you know, um, do your own due diligence. Dying on this hill. All right, so U.S. stocks indexes reported their biggest one-day gains in nearly a month Tuesday as investors reacted positively to a fresh batch of company earnings reports. The S&P 500 added $105.84 points or almost 3% to end the day at 3936.69. It's an interesting number, 3936.69. The tech-focused NASDAQ gained 353 plus points or over 3%. And the Dow rose 754 plus points, um, just over 2.4%. All three indexes logged their biggest one-day point and percentage gain since June 24th. They have risen more than 6% from their lows in mid-June, but remain down sharply for the year. Investors are parsing earnings reports to determine how decades-high inflation is affecting corporate profits and consumer spending. Economists have been raising the estimated chances of a U.S. recession within the next 12 months. Worried that the higher interest rates put in place by the Federal Reserve to curb inflation will weigh on growth. Some investors, though, are on the lookout for signs from executives that the economic picture might not be as dark as feared. When you look at what's happening in the real economy through the lens of our customers, I'd say it's less than 50-50 that we end up with a recession at this point. Really? <laughs> That's funny. Um, said Bruce Van Son, CEO of Citizens Financial Group. Um, on another note, you know, the Atlanta Fed came out, revised their GDP now for Q2. We're looking at negative 
with an estimate for the forecast for Q uh, for Q2, uh, but we'll get those numbers, the official numbers next week, right? Uh, but that's going to confirm we're in a recession. So when these economists are saying that we're not going to be in a recession, I really don't know what data they're looking at. Uh, maybe they're just looking at the labor market, or maybe they're maybe they don't consider a shallow recession uh, a recession, right? But I mean, the data is pretty much pointing to you know, us confirming the recession next week, but we'll see. All right, investors see bank earnings as a good way to determine the path of the broader economy since their businesses closely track the health of consumers and businesses, right? Bank of America Chief Executive Brian Moynihan also said on the bank's earnings call earlier this week that its customers' resilience and health remain strong. When we hear leaders say that inflation is under check or the general business climate is getting more hospitable, that's what markets react to positively, said Christopher McMahon, president and chief executive at Aquinas Wealth Advisors. All right. Netflix, which reported after market close, said it lost subscribers in two consecutive quarters for the first time in its history. But the streaming giant lost fewer customers than it had anticipated. 970,000 compared with an expected 2 million. Shares rose in after hours trading. Investors are paying close attention to comments companies make about plans to cut back on hiring or other investments. Some technology companies, including Apple, Microsoft, and Alphabet's Google, have already slowed hiring or cut jobs. If the corporate sector starts to cut back on investment spending, that to me is the nail in the coffin said uh, Lucha uh, Paolini, chief strategist at PicTet Asset Management. Expectations for global growth and profits reached an all-time high in July, according to Tuesday's global fund manager survey from Bank of America. Meanwhile, investors' allocation to stocks is at the lowest level since October 2008, the survey found. Nobody is incentivized to be optimistic right now, said Mark Hackett, chief of investment research at Nationwide investment management group, the market is already positioned for extreme pessimism. The Wall Street Journal dollar index, which measures the dollar against a basket of 16 currencies, fell a half a percent. The declining dollar likely drove equities higher, said Anthony um, Saglambini, global market strategist at Ameriprise. It'll be a headwind if the dollar continues to move higher. The dollar had surged against other currencies this year as investors sheltered from falling stocks and bet on U.S. economic resilience. The euro, which hit parity with the dollar last week, rose 0.8% to a dollar um, and two cents. Right? In company news, shares of international business machines, IBM, fell $7.25 or 5 and a quarter percent to $130.88 after the technology company said shutting down its Russia operations and a strong dollar weighed on its quarterly results. Hmm. I wonder if we're going to continue to hear that, you know, uh, as earnings season continues. Shares of Lockheed Martin gained over $3 or 0.8 percent to $390.38 after the aerospace and defense contractor reported results that missed analyst profit and sales estimates. Johnson & Johnson shares lost $2.54 or 1.5%, reversing earlier gains to close down at $171.69. The pharmaceutical and consumer health products company reported a profit in sales that beat expectations but reduced its earnings outlook for the year on Tuesday. Shares of Halliburton rose 62 cents or 2.1% to $29.46 after the oil services company beat profit and revenue expectations. In bond markets, the yield on the benchmark 10-year treasury note ticked up to 3.017% from 2.959% Monday. Hmm. The yield was rising. Um, that's interesting. Yields and price move inversely. 
And in energy markets, Brent crude, the international benchmark for oil prices, rose one percent. So we got crude rising, the, the yield rising, and stocks rallying. Very interesting. Overseas, the pan-continental stocks, Europe 600, gained 1.4%. The European Central Bank is expected to raise interest rates for the first time in 11 years at its meeting Thursday. Typically, interest rate increases cause currencies to strengthen because investors are paid more to invest in those assets. Officials are expected to discuss raising interest rates by half a percentage point, the Wall Street Journal reported. Economists, though, still expect a quarter percentage point increase in line with what ECB President Christine um, Lagarde has signaled. In Asia, major indexes were mixed. Um, the China Shanghai composite was flat. South Korea's market edged down 0.2%, and Hong Kong's market fell 0.9%, right? So that's the rundown, y'all. Let's jump into global news. Right. Residential construction slips for second straight month. Housing starts in the U.S. fell 2% in June as interest rates climbed and a global housing boom faded. Russian gas supplies to Europe aren't expected to restart. Europe is working on contingency plans for the possibility that the Nord Stream pipeline won't return to operation. Blinken to highlight Ukraine war and push for supply chain cooperation. The Biden administration is encouraging friend shoring where companies seek suppliers in countries friendly with the US, particularly in the Indo-Pacific region. Strong dollar fuels pullback in commodity markets. Prices of oil, metals, and agricultural products have tumbled since early June, in part because the dollar has risen to its highest level since 2002. Wow. Right. Um, Yellen calls for trade overhaul to diversify from China. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen called for the US and its allies to trade more closely with one another and less with geopolitical rivals. All right. One hedge fund is up 223% after betting against tech. Call train asset management reached, uh, reaped profits on a two year short of tech and growth companies. Hmm. Interesting. Leap puts. All right. All right. Company news Netflix loses nearly 1 million subscribers, but vows rebound. The streaming giant suffered two straight quarters of subscriber losses for the first time but said it will add 1 million net new subscribers in the current period. It lost 970,000 paid subscribers in the second quarter, fewer than the 2 million it expected. Novavax's COVID-19 vaccine when CDC advisors backing, the newly authorized shot will become widely available if the Center for Disease Control and Prevention listens to its advisors and recommends the vaccine. Twitter and Musk trial set for October in lawsuit over stalled $44 billion takeover. A Delaware Chancery Court judge granted the social media platform's request to fast track the proceedings. Big tech antitrust bill backers pushed for vote. Lawmakers released documents um, that said they made the, uh, made the case for tougher regulation, but big tech companies disputed the need for change. Facebook shifts resources from news to focus on creator economy. A senior executive told employees that the company is reallocating resources from its Facebook news tab and newsletter platform bulletin. Apple to pay $50 million settlement over butterfly keyboard suit. Um, the lawsuit alleged that issues with the butterfly keyboard could result in characters um, type being repeated unexpectedly or keys not responding to in a consistent manner, among other problems. Mm, it was check on it, huh? Um, Boeing sells five 787 Dreamliners to aircraft lesser and air shell boost. Boeing sold five more 787s to aircraft leasing company Air Aircap, its largest buyer for the wide body jet. Hasbro stocks up on toys ahead of holidays the toy company's inventory levels climbed nearly 75% as it tries to avoid supply chain problems ahead of the key selling season. 
Cruising along, CDC ends COVID monitoring program. The CDC is expected to issue new guidance to help the cruise industry manage its own COVID-19 mitigation strategies. All right. All right, that's the rundown for today, y'all. That's the rundown. Strong move back um, by the Bulls. You know, um, there was this news that came out on Kathy. Uh, oh, man, not Kathy. Yeah, man. There was this article that came out near the, uh, about 30, 40 minutes ago. Uh, Kathy Woods Arc shutters transparency ETF in first closure. Kathy Wood is closing down one of her ETFs the first time her Arc Investment Management has pulled the plug on an ETF. The St. Petersburg, Florida based firm is shutting down its Arc Transparency ETF, which was CTRU, which launched at the end of last year, according to a regulatory filing, with holdings like Teladoc and Spotify. The fund aims to invest in companies that receive high scores on transparency. <laughs> Arc said in a statement that Transparency Global, which shaped the fund's underlying index, will stop calculating the portfolio at the end of July. While Arc investigated alternative index providers, it does not find a suitable solution and decided to close the fund. Um, the product had gained only $12 million in assets since it started, a fraction of the $9 billion in Woods flagship fund. Its price has dropped more than 30% since its debut in late December. It will no longer accept creation orders after Thursday and won't accept redemption orders after July 26th, the following show. Mm. That's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Um, I guess, you know, they probably felt that, you know, a few of these ETFs probably shared the same core companies. Um, and maybe, you know, that was one of the main reasons, you know, uh, you know, that they let art go. Um, or that, you know, that transparency fund. All right, y'all. So let's look at Netflix. Let's uh, take a little deeper dive into that report. Netflix loses fewer subscribers than expected and says cheaper ad tiers coming in early 2023. Like we said, they lost 970,000. Um, the company aims to unveil its lower cost ad supported tier in early 2023. Streaming giant provided guidance for the third quarter saying it expects to add around 1 million net new subscribers. EPS came in at $3.20 versus $2.94 a share. Revenue was a miss, um, $7.97 billion versus $8.03 billion. Uh, I mean, global paid net subscribers, uh, you know, the loss came in a lot better than what analysts were expecting. I'll just say that. All right. Um, so what we got? Currently 220 plus million subscribers. Said it expects um, net ads to reach 1 million in the third quarter, reversing some losses seen during the first half of the year. Analysts have predicted Netflix would guide for growth of around 1.8 million. So significantly lower there um, as far as the upcoming. The company warned of the strengthening of the strengthening US dollars impact on its international revenue, which makes up 60% of its top line. The dollar surge comes as the Federal Reserve hikes interest rates to fight four decade high inflation in the United States. Still coming in. Um, last quarter, Netflix addressed its slowing revenue growth, which it said was the result of competition, account sharing, and other factors like sluggish economic growth in the war in Ukraine. We've now had more time to understand these issues, as well as how best to address them. 
Its focus remains on content offering big budget films on its service rather than in theaters and providing all episodes of new shows all at once for subscribers to hinge or sorry for subscribers to bench the company uh is out of stranger things season um four as a big win for the brand not only did it top viewership records for the company it was also nominated for several 2022 emmys so solid you know uh, solid on the earning side you know miss on revenue uh you know they're getting rid of you know these duplicate accounts or these sharing accounts um i think they're the company's moving forward in the right direction i just don't know if these margins this earning this net income can continue you know uh to be proficient all right anybody got anything else to add No? Yeah, I do. Peace and abundance. Yeah, I can. <clears throat> so we were discussing about the G7 today. Um, as Canada, Italy, Japan, um, Germany, the United States and the United Kingdom, um, they account for 50% of uh, the world's wealth. Um, at 419 trillion. Um, all these countries have a single problem inflation. Um, so, yeah, the, bull, the, bit, the Bulls had a nice run today. Um, and we'll, we'll remain to see, you know, what's coming next week. Are, yeah. are the thing raising rates or not? Because, I mean, y'all can keep it running. I just want to have to be on people to the walk away. So yeah. I'll leave it at that. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to see how it plays out. Definitely going to see how it plays out. You know, conviction is important, right? Don't listen to me. Don't watch me, right? Um, you know, come over with your own pieces. Right? But I told y'all what I'm doing. So y'all what I'm doing. And it might work out, it might not. Right? <laughs> and I'm okay with that. <laughs> you know, I've made peace with that. Right. But you know, just looking at the economics and you know, on a serious note, just looking at like the economics and everything that I see coming out, and just looking back at Q2, I think that, you know, um, a lot of these companies, the guidance won't be strong. And I don't think Q2 earnings is gonna be as strong as the market is expecting. I just don't think that. Um, but we'll find out soon enough. All right, find out soon enough. Um, so those are some of the main headlines from today. You know, let's let's go ahead, jump into the charts. Uh, real quick before you jump into the charts, MJ, what about um, Congress passing the bill for the chip? That's also going to help the market. That's a positive for the market, you know. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely a, a big positive, you know, investing back here in the United States. Um, you know, that would definitely help companies like Intel, AMD, um, and, uh, you know, other chip companies that are based, you know, that can do manufacturing here in the U.S. Because, you know, the U.S. doesn't want to continue to depend on Taiwan. Uh, they don't want to continue to depend on Taiwan. You know, they'd rather bring you know, that business here. So I think that's a smart investment. I think that's a very smart investment. All right. So on the very bottom, I got RSI. Second to the bottom, I got volume. Right. And as we jump into the chart, you can see, you know, we had that tap of demand, you know, the close Friday. Uh, nice drop based rally and then a continuation today. Nice continuation here today. Um, you know, we didn't break the previous week's high yet, which was 39.50. 
And they can um, you or show. Yeah, I, I keep don't you ever show. I don't know if your phone is in your pocket. I keep muting you, but it keeps unmuting. But yeah, so we got to close above the 50 day today. Uh, above the 50 day. Let's look at SPX real quick. Um, so we did get a nice close above the 50 day. We'll see if sellers can bring us back below that. Uh, but you know, that's a, you know, that's a strong move there. Last time we did that was in uh, April. So I think this has been, you know, this move has been one of the longest down moves. We had the retracement, then we came back down. And now we've kind of just been trading inside this range, right? Uh, let's go back to ES. So I do see like a, a bear flag forming here. Uh, you can see we had the strong move up, then we kind of just been, you know, uh, you know, price action is weird. We made a new, a lower, uh, a higher low, then we made a lower low, right? And then we made a higher high, lower high, uh, and then higher high from the previous high. We didn't, we didn't break this high though, which is 39.50, but we're on the brink of testing that. I think we might get a, a, a gravestone. I think we might get a gravestone doji to close out the week. I don't think this continues. I'm just a man. I think we might get a gravestone or uh, just like a perfect doji uh, going into next week. I think that's, uh, I think that'll be really nice. Uh, but I do see a bear flag forming here. We'll see if it plays out uh, as far as demand and supply goes. All right, so we ended up closing above this supply. So this is now invalid. But uh, we still have this four hour supply up here. All right, so if I drag this over, but so if I um, Change the color here. All right, so you can see we're still in this four hour supply technically, uh, which we double topped out of. So we'll see if uh, 39.50 is a very, very important level. If we could hold above 39.50, I think we more than likely get to 400 or 4,000 without a doubt. I think we get to 4,000 without a doubt. Right. But that's going to be a very, very nice entry. Very, very nice entry for puts if you're not already in them. Um, but we'll see how price reacts to this upper upper level of supply. We closed the first gap. Now, you know, there's still a gap around 4,000 that needs to that needs to get filled. But very, very interesting price action. Like you can see, we kind of just been trading sideways up, down in between 3750 and you know for the most part 3900 but since we cleared it you know 39 you know 3950 been trading back and forth in between those longs uh one thing i wanted to point out too is the vix is looks like it could have a double bottom here looks like we could possibly get a double bottom here on the vix uh, so just something I wanted to point out too, because if we get a double bottom out of demand and off the 200 day, you know, that could give the VIX some momentum um, and it could have a potential nice move going back up to around 27.30. So just keep your eyes on this. You see we got the basin candle. Ooh, got the basin candle here. And then we came back down you know, could, yeah, it could possibly be a nice double bottom that plays out here on the VIX, right? Um, let's see if we can get back above 25 tomorrow. Uh, crude oil, crude oil making some moves here. Um, 
you know, we had the gap down Sunday night, rallied Monday. Today, again, we uh, made, we, you know, we made a higher high on uh, crude. So looks like, you know, the market isn't reacting to that re recession talk as much now, which means, uh, you know, uh, oil can still be in high demand, right? All right, let's look at the NASDAQ. Similar chart on the NASDAQ, we're rallying. Very similar. I mean, the NASDAQ ascending triangle is kind of still valid right? because we didn't make a new low. Um, we could push to this 12. 543, uh, 12,543 level, uh, which is a key level. You can see we got support here, could possibly turn into resistance. Um, but the NASDAQ and S&P look, uh, think, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Distinctively different, right? distinctively different. But again, we close above the 50 day. We'll see how long that holds of seller step in. With the Apple, I'm seeing, I'm seeing like a, uh, seeing like a bear flag here on Apple as well, y'all. Tell me if I'm tripping. Somebody tell me. Let me know. Am I tripping? It's like a bear flag is setting up here on, um, on Apple, on the S&P as we continue to squeeze, so. But what's the fib reduction on, on, a, on a bear flag? Uh, I guess it depends from which peak you're going from. If you're uh, if we're going from the all time high, you mean the peak for puts, right? Or cost? <laughs> Now the peak for the puts, like at what point will price reverse? Right, if, right, right. If it's a bear flag. If it's a bear flag, I think we could reverse here at 150. You know, we, we close, we could get like a, a gravestone doji here. Or not a gravestone, um, you know, a hammer doji. Right. Uh, but you know, we're at, we're at the 38.2 from the all-time high um, to the to the low. And let me just bring that down a little bit. All right, so you can see we, we closed just above the 38.2, but sellers could step in because, uh, you know, cause like a double top. We did have the three candle yesterday. So I would say the 38.2, and if that doesn't hold, you know, probably 156, uh, 50 at 618, or possibly 164, right? Where the 618 is, right? Let's take a look at Netflix in the after hours. So hold on, hold on. Can you go back for a second? Yeah, what was that just on ES? No, you was on Apple, I okay. think. Sorry, exhausted. Yeah. Yeah, this is Apple. Okay. How come you're not bullish since the EMAs cross back down there? And uh, that the fourth? I mean, we had an EMA cross back here in March. And what happened? Well, well I'm only saying the EMA cross and the price kept running. Um, and then we had to pull back the EMA held and then price pushed higher. So I'm just asking in your opinion, uh, without your bearish bias, uh, do you think price could go higher? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think price could go higher. I mean, the S and P could, could go higher. Uh, remember we still got the gap 
to four at four thousand. We still have this gap here, um, so we, we probably you know could see 39, 39.70 tomorrow, which would set us up really nice for sixty one eight test from the swing high, right? And that would really complete that bear flag as well. Um, and we still got the gap up here to 40.17 to um, close that gap, right? So I think this is really just setting up for a really nice bull trap. Uh, all in all, I mean, now I could be wrong. I could be wrong, right? But I just don't see how these S&P earnings come out good for a lot of these companies. I just don't see it. And, um, you know, instead of doing another hike, we're getting the recession is going to be confirmed, right? The recession is going to be confirmed next week when GDP comes out. Uh, I, I'm not expecting consumer sentiment to be better, right? Um, so all of these things don't really point to, like, us going to 4,100 or 4,200. So, all right. Well, all right. So the EMA is about to cross tomorrow on, on your chart. You see that, right? Yeah. On the daily. And I think on the weekly, like I said, I think on the weekly we get an in, like, I think we, we, we rally and test, but by the end of the week, this candle could be red. Yo, but, but Tom, Tom Lee said we rally in the second half, though. <laughs> so we just going to gate that? Tom Lee, yeah, man. No, that oh. the rally is still in play. We could possibly rally. Like, if we sell off, it could be a quick, you know, we make new lows. I don't it's know. not a rally, MJ. No, it's I'm saying after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's a retrace, right? But, I mean, I think all roads lead to what the Fed is going to do. I mean, so, we could call it a rally if it makes them sleep better at night. That's fine. So, all right, we 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 gonna we gonna look back right to the left. You see when it broke your uh, your blue EMA last time, right? All the way to the left, right there. Yep. When it broke it, you know it it was a continuation. Then we got that pullback. Oh, we about to break it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think we get to your seventy eight six level, uh, which is at forty sixty one. Um, and then even at forty one seventy seven, again, I'm I'm just looking at the, this bull train, like if, if overnight, well, on the ES, if overnight we break thirty nine fifty, you know they're not gonna stop. Also, there's no new new economic data coming out, and they gotta make it super juicy. I'm so upset I'm not in calls, but it is what it is. Um, and I mean the the bull trap that's about to line up if this continues. Is the walk away? I mean, it's the walk away. I mean, we like I was just looking today, right? Between today and yesterday, somebody could have turned twenty five dollars into ninety one k just on XPX calls and puts. Uh, so you got puts yesterday, and then it bounced off the fifty, got in the calls, and then rounds today. Um, man, it's just crazy that this the market we're living in right now. Um, it's nuts. Yes. Yeah, but I want people to understand though, like I could be wrong. Right? Like well, I, we both I, been wrong. We both been wrong. But you know, we, we what you haven't been wrong on though. Them puts off the head and shoulders, you know, back in uh January. So I'm gonna digress. Was, yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna be hundred percent right, but you've been more wrong than right. I mean more right than wrong, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, and I, I feel like, yeah, 4,000 4, could happen. I just feel like the lows aren't in. I say all that to say, like, I don't feel like the lows are in. That's just my opinion. Especially when everybody calling it, calling it the low. Yeah. Well, we we got to look at it like this, though, too, right? Today is the only week where there's no data, no economic data that's going to rival a pushback, right? Um, we made that lower low on the ES when we it was a like triple bottom and they dipped down lower than the buyers came in. It was a demand too. So that you had um, talked about multiple times. So if any, if, if they're going to make, if the bulls are going to make the push, this would have been the week, right? You know, they got to set it up. 
and 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 we're going into earnings season. So typically, you know, you know, stocks could, could run up going into earnings and then sell off. Yeah. But isn't that always the case? Yes. And what we must understand, it's a new quarter, first month, right? You also talked about this, MJ, that yo, we might rally just off um the fact that it was it's a new month and it's the first month of the quarter. But and we was waiting on um federal funds rate, CPI data came out, they trashed it, right? Like we just we can't negate that CPI was trash, right? And all this 75 basis point talk is garbage. Um, you know, come with the 100. And then when the GDP come out negative, I mean, that's recession. It's a wrap. I mean, like. Yeah. Yeah. All of these things. We, we got two hands. What's up, Tyler? Tyler, you yeah, my bad, bro. Y'all can go to the next person real quick. All right, what's up, Leon? No, I was just going to say what I think Aki was saying just a couple of weeks ago. I mean, to me, and what we were talking about during the uh, lead up to the market review for the week is that the earnings reports haven't been bad at all. And since it looks like the majority of these earnings reports these companies are beating, that's why you're seeing the sentiment, the sentiment change. Do you agree with that? Um, I guess I feel like we really haven't gotten to those major companies yet. I feel like we, I think next week is when, you know, you know, where we get to the the bulk, the bulk of these companies, where we could really start to see what, you know, the who's who, you know what I mean? Uh, we really only got banks. We got, you know, what do we get? Boeing, we got uh, you got TSM, which probably oh, is an indicator TSM. of Nvidia and AMD. Yeah, so we still got to get Nvidia, AMD. We got TSM, we got IBM, right? Which you know was was an interesting interesting print um, because a lot of companies are similar to them. Um, but yeah, I think. Yeah, I don't feel like we've gotten to those who's who's yet, in my opinion. Uh, I think next week is going to be the tell-off, really. Hey, MJ, is this the rally you guys talked about a couple of weeks ago? You might see a little rally before anything happens? Yeah, this this could be it. I think, you know, this, this um, I think it's just a retracement. I wouldn't really call it a, a, a rally. Um, you know, I think this is just a, a retracement. But it's possible, you know, that we that we go up and close close this gap here. So what happens if Tesla be, be turning? Uh, I'm not really worried about Tesla. I'm worried about Apple, Microsoft, Amazon. I mean, Tesla's deliveries already came, you know, Tesla probably will be, but, you know, it's the ones that are in that, you know, that top 10. I mean, Tesla is a huge, huge part of the S&P, but, you know, Apple and Microsoft really moved the market. Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Facebook, you know, these are the companies that, that really truly moved the market. So those are the ones that I'm paying, you know, the closest attention to. Because if, um, if um, you know, if Apple, you know, is talking about headwinds and FX and Microsoft and these, like these things, then the market is going to react to that more so than, you know, these other companies, right? Because, you know, Apple is 7% of the S&P, but you have a lot of institutions that are probably overweight. Apple and Microsoft. So they might, their portfolios might be, you know, eight, nine, 10%, you know, Apple or Microsoft. So I think once we get those, I think it'll be a, a domino effect. And not, not even just that, right? Like I said, you know, GDP, uh, Fed decision, right? Uh, and all of these different things, right? So I think, you know, um, 
yeah, I think next week's next week is gonna be the tell off. Next week is really gonna be very, very important. Hold on, let me see. Let me before you before you uh jump in, Aki, I just wanna see it. Tyler, you still got a question? Yeah, no, I just wanted to throw in my uh my two cent off what's like pretty much going on. Um as far as like spy and apple goes, I mean I agree with y'all. I think it's po it's possible we can rally, but just like you said, we kind of have that bear flag going on. Uh, but like you said, the trend is down. So you have you have weekly gaps because like, I'm a gap person, so I look at gaps often. So you have gaps on Apple, Spy, QQQ, DIA. Pretty much all the major uh, indexes have gaps on the weekly at like lows. So I mean, like this little rally, it really doesn't mean anything to be honest with you because. Like we have to fill those those weekly gaps, uh, so that's just something I want to put on everyone's mind. I don't know if you can on here, but um, I've been looking at the, at the uh, six month time frame just to really get like a, a larger scope on what's really going on. Um, yeah. And the way charts looking on a six month time frame is kind of it's pretty scary. Uh, if you're in calls, is this is probably this move up is like you said, just a retracement for the next move down. To be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that. That's that's yeah. I agree with that. It's kind of been um, you know, my sentiment as well. You know, um, yeah. I, the, I think this is really just setting up. It's a really nice bear flag for me. Uh, you know, we're back at the the nine EMA. We've tested the nine EMA a few times this year, right? Okay. On retracements here here, here, and now we're testing it again. So this isn't really an out of the norm. Uh, let's see, let's do it by percentage, right? So right now we're up 8% from the lows. The last retracement, we were up 10% from the lows. You know, the retracement in February and March, we were up 13% from the lows. The retracement in January, we were up, you know, 9% from the low. So this, this move here, you know, this is actually one of the, the smallest retracements so far of the year. So I wouldn't really, you know, say, all right, we're about to rally. I mean, this is an average retracement, you know, right. just based on the stats, on the, on the numbers. And like, I, I don't know who was saying it, but um, someone said that there's really – not much uh, economic data this week. So this is kind of the perfect week to kind of like stay that rally because there's not much bad news coming out. Um, and like you said, next week you got all these earnings. And then even today with Netflix, Netflix didn't really have good earnings, but I guess it wasn't as bad, which is not a good thing because like economic, our economic uh, situation is going to get worse and worse. So what they call not as bad now <laughs> is going to be worse next quarter. Yeah. So yep. What's going to be the story then? Yeah, and they kind of alluded to that. They said that FX was even going to be worse. The FX issue right. was even going to be worse next quarter. Yeah. No, that's, that's, yeah, those are some great points, Tyler. Appreciate it. Yeah, Tyler, you're oh, Aki, you coming in a little low. Yeah, but you sound like uh, you sound like Darth Vader a little bit. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with your audio. Nah, you sound like <laughs> yo, Matt. Got to chill. <laughs> nah, it's try it again. Nah, it's still coming out like a little. Echoey or like Darth Vader-ish. Uh, right. It'll sound a little better now. Hold on. Uh, and nah, I still, you still sounding like yeah. All right. Uh, uh. Um, but yeah, y'all see, man, this is like this is just a normal retracement. Oh, somebody's drawing on the screen. Who's that? Dawit, you drawing on the screen, bro? Um, 
But yeah, you know, based on the just the numbers, you know, from all the previous retracements this year, you know, this is a very normal, like I said, you know, 9%, 13%, 10%, you know, these are all normal retracements, right? Um, let's go back to ES. all normal retracements and you know us testing that 38 two fib you would expect you know some buyers to step in there um let's see where we are from the bearish side on the fib um so we're right above the 23 six uh, like I said, I think we get a pin bar. I think, you know, we push up, but by the end of the week, we, we get back below 39.15, right? I think by the end of the week, we get back below 39.15. We get somewhat of a pin bar or a doji. Um, so I don't think we're going to close this week with the bulls completely in control. What's up, Aki? Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. All right, perfect. So if, if the rally continues, um, we definitely gonna see your 4085 or 38.2 level that you had talked about, um, 4085.65. That, that's the descending triangle. Uh, this is the weekly chart, right? Yep. Yeah, this is the weekly uh, And what, that's all demand uh, that price had to break through. So that's a perfect. Yeah, you cut out. You cut out, bro. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, I hope y'all see this is a bear market rally, bear market retracement. I think um, I think we could get the four thousand, right? You know, uh, if you're holding on to your puts, you know. If, if you plan on holding on to your puts till next week, there's no reason for you to like continue checking them, right? Because all it's gonna do is, you know, make you try to make you panic, right? Um, so just a word of advice. If you're, if, you're, if you're holding on to your puts, don't keep looking at them, right? Because if you're not planning on selling them, there's no point in you keep looking at them to just trick you out, right? Um, hey, go ahead, yeah. I can. Oh, I, can yeah. hear you. I can hear you now. Right. What was the last thing you heard me say? I'm sorry, because my Wi Fi is tripping. Uh, I think um, you said rallying back to the 38.2 to 48.5. Yeah. Yep. So now remember, have the economics changed? Absolutely. No. Not. Is the G7 economics better than the United States? That's Canada, um, Japan, Italy. France, the United Kingdom. No, they're not. Okay. So what, not, mind you, they control 50% of the world's wealth, right? Those seven countries. So since their economics are not better than ours, that means our dollar is going to continue to rally, which is a negative effect on any global company. Right. Exactly. When I'm, so the Apples, the Microsoft, the Netflix, you can look at Netflix earnings right now, and it shows you they lost money because of the appreciation of the dollar. You get 60% of their revenue outside the US. Apple's same one, Microsoft, I don't know what their pie chart is on that. But, and then also the Russia business situation, you know, we're gonna, we gonna see that. So um, in this quarter, China, you know, this is all a setup. Remember, economics impact the markets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not the other way around. And, and the market follows the big dogs. The market follows the big dogs. Like, let's just say Apple misses, right? Which I don't think they, I don't think Apple will miss, but I just, you know, I think they won't, they won't hit that whisper number, right? But let's say Apple misses. 
there's no way the market rallies if Apple misses. Like, I don't care, <laughs> like, who else, like, what, who else does what. Like, the market is, follows the big dogs, right? So, you know, if, um, you know, the big dogs sell off, the overall market is going to sell off, you know, because the market kind of, you know, I don't know if y'all have read Jim Cramer's book, but the market trades a lot off ETFs. And these ETFs that have heavily weighted stocks like Apple, Microsoft, uh, causes causes the market to sell off, right? Um, so yeah. So are we gonna see a clash for next week? Because you have the Fed meeting next week, and then you have the big dogs next week. Mm. Good question, I'm Keaton. Oh, Clinton. Sorry, my bad. Clash in what way? Well, if they have good earnings, but then the Fed drop one basis, um, hundred basis point, then do the market still rally, or do do it negate what the Fed is doing? But what is the? What do you think? There's a. What do you think? There's a higher probability. Do you feel like there's a higher probability of the market having good earnings or the Fed doing 100 basis points, right? Because if we're saying that there's a higher probability that the market has good earnings, then I feel like the it's skewed, it's skewed to the upside because I feel like there's a higher probability of a 75 than a hundred right now, right? So if we're thinking that the market, if you're thinking that the market is gonna have good earnings, then that means there's a higher chance that the market should rally, right? Because I feel like there's a lower chance of a hundred basis point. But if we're saying that the market isn't gonna have good earnings, then um, and then we get a 75, I feel like we still, we still sell off. No, but even with the 75, even if they, even if they don't do a, are you saying that they already factored into 75? The market already factored that in? I feel like the market has factored in a 75. Um, but, um, yeah, I think the market has definitely has factored in the 75 because the Fed has been telegraphing that for a little while. Um, but, you know, it's all about also what the Fed says, right, in the press conference. Um, and, you know, their projections as well. So, you know, it's just... <laughs> You know, it's just, uh, I think everything, everything hangs on earnings. I think everything hangs on earnings. The market gets a hundred. I think, I don't think we should really be, it's possible we get a hundred, but even as of, you know, this past weekend, the Fed has been saying that they're still looking at 75 based on what Wall Street Journal has been reporting. So I think the main focus right now isn't the Fed. The main focus right now is earnings. Right, because I think the market has pretty much said, all right, the market is like, we're gonna get a 75. Now, if we do get a hundred, then y'all already know what's gonna happen. But let's say we do get a 75. The main thing right now is earnings. What is earnings telling us and what is guidance telling us, right? And how confident are companies moving forward for the rest of the year because the market is forward looking. So if companies are still saying they could be experiencing headwinds quarter, you know, for the rest of the year, then that's going to have a negative impact. And Netflix said that, IBM said that, right? There's been companies that have been saying that because remember now it's not just about the earnings because earnings is, is the past, right? It's about what they feel, how confident they are about, you know, moving forward. And Netflix just said that FX is going to be worse next quarter. Right? 
So I think, you know, everything hangs on earnings. I don't think it, it, it really is hanging on the Fed decision right now. I'm, I'm, I'm running with the Fed since they run it. They run it because the Fed is the one that saved everyone from falling out the sky, right, with 0%. So them raising rates is not a good economic environment for these companies to thrive. Because if that was the case, well, we wouldn't have uh, 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 them snatching away the entire 2021 in two quarters. Mm-hmm. And there's two more quarters left to go. Um, and then what? What they... Where's the rally? On what? I can what, tell you. What, 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 what's the rally based on? The, the rally is based upon, okay, if you're talking about the Fed, you're talking about earnings, right? And you're talking about what will be and earnings right now is, is what was. This was the same talk I had, we all had a quarter ago because we were all looking forward to these earnings and now they beat in. Right now, S&P 500, at least 60% of the companies are going to be even more, have been in early earnings. Okay. Guidance has been a little bit shaky. I agree with that. But earnings have been beaten. And we were thinking that this quarter is going to be the quarter that we were going to start missing earnings. Or no, no, this past quarter was going to be the quarter. Oh, no, no, this quarter, sorry. This quarter is the only one we're going to be beat, uh, missing earnings. So it's like now we're going into another quarter and then we're all right. Next quarter, we're going to miss. We're going to miss next quarter. And then what happened did they beat again? So, I mean, we've never really seen pretty much less than 70% of S&P 500 um, not beating earnings. Like, that doesn't typically happen, right? So, I know even though the guidance may not be the greatest, though, but these companies, when you're talking about um, layoffs and, and everything else, like, you got to take that with a grain of salt because they're laying off 20% of their staff, but they are also are hiring in certain areas. They're just being more specific on what areas they're hiring into. So if they lose 20%, whatever of, you know, I don't even know, some project management in different areas, but then they're increasing their engineering staff. So what is the balance upon that? So is they're being very strategic and preparing. They're insulating themselves because they're preparing for a recession. You know what I mean? Like I know GDP numbers are gonna come out later on this month and it could come out negative, but do we really believe that we're in a recession right now? Like, do we really believe that? Is unemployment really that high where we're in a recession? So unemployment data is going to have to be a huge factor. And then on top of that, when you look at the global economy right now, global economy isn't doing the best, but you got ECB about to come out of increasing their rates. So let's see what their economy is going to look like. You know what I mean? There's going to, there's going to be other factors involved in when we're talking about rallying. So if they come in and a little bit soft and they think, okay, we, we may be able to stick a soft landing. And then, you know, UK and everybody else starts getting involved. And they're like, okay, even Argentina is at all time highs with their global exchange right now. Nobody talking about that. Nobody talking about all these little, uh, all these other places. But hey, I mean, we can rally. I think we could rally. I mean, bear markets do have their rallies and they typically rally could be about 10%. So f and is if the S&P goes down 10% from what, 20%? They can still drop. But I'm saying though, the news could already be baked in. Like people already started to insulate themselves. And like I said, it's all about the war chest. And when you talk about Apple and these other big companies like Microsoft, they got a huge war chest. They're okay. These companies are not going to be affected like that. When you talk about AMD, NVIDIA, all of them have great profit margins. They have a lot of cash flow, free cash flow. And they're sitting on a ton of assets. So when you're looking at overall market, I guess overall market um, fundamentals, but I like to go about the fundamentals, they look solid. I'm just, I'm saying that. So, so that's why I was, oh, you said we said, go on in there. My bad. Yeah, Matt. Yeah, Matt. I love it. I love it. All right. So Matt, Matt. Matt, that was amazing, Matt. But I'm about to come there with that fire out there. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick, Aki. <laughs> Matt, do you feel like this quarter earnings is going to be better than last quarter? This something? quarter is better than last quarter. I'll say this. I'll say I'm. I'm. A, I'll say no. I believe that there's going to be a slight slowdown. I believe they're going to beat, though. I do believe they're going to beat, but I don't think they're going to beat as big as the previous quarter. All right. So last quarter. So are you saying all of the all the the economic headwinds? Because if Last quarter was good, right, in the grand scheme of things, and we still sold off, right? So 
after Apple reported last quarter, what we were at 164, Apple then eventually sold to 129, right? So if last quarter was solid, right? If last quarter was solid and the stock still sold off, right? And you're telling me this quarter is gonna be worse, right? And we're not gonna sell off or we're gonna rally. How does that make sense? Unless you're telling me that all of the economic, everything that is plaguing the economic environment is already priced in. Because I'm saying, oh, oh someone's jump on the jump. Now I just had a question. MJ, aren't estimates lower than last earnings season? Estimates are lower, but they're not even low as they so should. If we, so if we beat a lower estimate, are we really doing better? No. Are we really beating? No. But can you we, compare we those are estimates? Beating. Can you compare those could estimates? Could they be, could they be sandbagging on their guy? No, so but what are we what what are we forwarding our estimates to be? Because remember, when all those companies was knocking things out the park, that was at zero percent, right? That's out the window now. So where where are where are our guidance gonna be going forward? You get what I'm saying? So earnings, if they beat, even if they beat a little bit. Compared to zero percent earnings, they are never going to get those numbers again. Mm -hmm. Right. That's a good point. I like Takia made a good point too about sandbagging. These companies aren't 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 dumb. Like you know, earnings calls is, is just a marketing tool to get investors excited. And, and, and sometimes, like for instance, right? Let's talk about Apple. Mm -hmm. Apple never really gives guidance like that. They'll give the environment on, on, you know what I mean? We potentially can see this or potentially might see this, but they'll never give a revenue guidance or an EPS guidance. That's not what they do, right? Mm -hmm. But Apple, we know always sandbags. They, they've they been sandbagging since the since, since the, the they began this day in com the, the company. They mm -hmm. all never give good guidance, but then when they beat, it's like, all right, we can see what Apple's about. Like when they beat last quarter and then talking about um, the increasing of their profit margins, you're like, okay. Because everything, when the war on uh, Ukraine ended up happening, supply chain was terrible. But Apple, guess what? They still got to do what they had to do, even though um, energy and everything else was, was troubling at that point. They figured out a way. Certain companies are going to figure out a way. I'm not saying all companies are going to figure out a way, but certain companies are going to figure out a way to eat. And it's just going to be a big sharp versus the guppies. And the big sharps are going to win this battle. So when you're looking at like for guidance and everything else, take it with a grain of salt because you got to think about like what else are they doing in the pipeline and what else are they holding back from from releasing. So when you think about Apple, they got things in the pipeline right now. When you think about even Meta has things in the pipeline right now. These companies have things in the pipeline and they have a whole lot of cash sitting back as well to implement when they need to. Look at AMD. AMD sitting on nothing but cash. AMD can engulf another company if they need to to help them throughout any of this time right now. If they want to go vertical, guess what? AMD can do it. They got the money. Microsoft can do it. They got the money. Happen to micro I mean, Microsoft, I ain't going to say that, but Microsoft buying Netflix or something like that. Like Microsoft can pretty much do what they want to do right now mm -hmm. and build out their platform. And then guess what? When they come out the recession, they'd be even a bigger juggernaut. Right. So, I mean, this is chess right now with these big companies. I, I hear you. I hear you, man. So, so MJ, you, you got it? Uh, no, go ahead. To, okay, all right. So. <clears throat> You said this chess, right? Um, so all the money they did, most of these companies just got, you know, from the Fed, you know, basically back in the economy, right? Because they gave us the money and then we in turn used the services of these companies, right? They also got some of them got PP loans, right? Um, or even got loans at 0% interest rates or, or lower. Uh, Fed bought some of these bonds, right, of these companies. Um, and then, you know, let's remove all of that out. How are they going to 
forget 0% interest rates and all those things. How are they going to uh, benefit negatively or positively in this FX, envi FX environment the way the dollar is appreciated near, going back almost near highs, right? Which is like 107. Well, the high is 121. We went to 107. Mind you, this thing been running since January 2021, first quarter. And, and it's not slowing down, right? Because as the Fed keeps raising rates, the FX or the Forex out of the US dollar is going to keep appreciating, which is going to impact their earnings exponentially. We're not talking about, you know, a couple of dollars here, a couple of million here. No, we're talking billions, right? And then we bring in China, COVID, right? We shut it all down. Okay, they said they're going to shift some of their um, <clears throat> Apple. So they're going to shift to India. Okay. Well, you still got to deal with the Forex situation, right? And that's going, we've we seen what that's doing to uh, Netflix, right? That's just destroying them. Look on statistics. Well, Netflix, you, can't, you can't look on Netflix. Oh, hold, up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm saying Netflix because that 60, 60% of their revenue is outside the U.S. Look on Statista, Apple, revenue outside the U.S., 67%. But but okay, but did you see how many users they're gonna plan on adding? Because the Latin America, what they're doing right now, obviously you know Latin America, they're testing on their crackdown right now. So even if they get an extra one user out of all those users that be sharing passwords, that's we're huge. Not, we're not we're so like, again. That's not gonna still negate the, the FX situation. Yeah, you added more users. Guess what? You just lost 60% or 30% of the money you just earned just because of the uh, conversion of currency. Because the federal funds, or Fed, which runs everything, is going to keep raising rates. Because every, and, and, and going back to um, the supporting this bull argument, all right, jobs is up. Retail spending is up. Remember, that's looking back. Before all the announcements and inflation too for that retail sales number. Yeah, so when when all of the data starts kicking in, right? All of those those announcements that that we had, yeah, people are going to get cut. That just didn't happen like boom, they got cut the next day. No, it's going to be either we got, we're not going to see it until the next quarter, right? And then once the unemployment data starts coming in, like oh, loss of jobs, right? This is after we get the negative. GDP that's going to come out next Friday right, or, or next week. Um, and then, then the story is going to start unraveling like, oh, th this is really a big problem, right? There's a reason Microsoft said something. There's a reason NVIDIA said something. There's a reason Snap said something. Yeah, it looks all pretty now, right? But it's, it's not going to look pretty later. They, right? But they say that. But, but Aki, these companies say that they're smart. They're protecting themselves. That's like when Chipotle, for instance, right? When inflation was going up high. Chipotle was charging more, but they were still getting the products at their same prices because everybody else going up on the prices. So I'm going to go up on the prices. I'm going to just blame it on inflation. I'm going to blame it on uh, um, um, the, the Fed funds rate. I can blame it on anything, but I already know what my company's doing. They could be doing the same thing right now. They can be like, all right, well, this, guy, this is the guidance. I'm just going with this. I'm passing. They can say what they want to say. But like I said, it all comes down, have they beat previously? Have they beat this time? What are they doing in their pipeline? How are they insulating themselves in the future to protect them? They're protecting themselves. This is it. They're, they're, this, this is a full core press protecting themselves. This is, this is it right hold up, now. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm, I'm going to take so your so word. When, hold up, hold okay. up, hold up. You say protecting themselves from what? We already know inflation is no, here. No, I'm not negating no, that when inflation no, is not here. No, 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 no. You, you say they're protecting themselves. They protect themselves from the downside of demand, right? That's what they're protecting themselves from. That's why they got cash hoards, right? That's what they're protecting themselves from. And they know that demand is about to wane because the Fed is about to raise rates, which is going to send a chain reaction in the economy to remove demand. Aki, the Fed's... Okay, the Fed raising rates doesn't dictate the entire economy. It only is going to hit a few things. Housing, everything that helps with interest rates is going to affect. But when you're talking about 
um, buying a cell phone or this or that. You forgetting, like I said, buy now, pay later is a thing. These people will pay $15 a month for a year. They'll pay $10 a month. They'll pay $20 a month. It so, still is going to happen. People are going to buy what they want to buy, whether it was after pay or it's uh, whatever Apple's about to do and they getting in that space too. Apple, for instance, right now, Apple can be like, all right, bet. They want to do this. I'm about to insulate myself even more. I'm cutting off all the carriers. We going to be the carrier. Mm-hmm. Then what? <laughs> they gonna, how they going to do that? What, 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 what spectrum? <laughs> Because that, that war test you think they got is not enough to buy Spectrum. Go ask Timo Way, TNT, Verizon about that. That $236 billion ain't enough. It's not enough. you saying it's $240 not, billion ain't enough. You crazy. Enough. Guy. It's not enough. Go look, at my, go look up the mm-hmm. auctions and see how much they had to spend. You act like, you, you don't, you act like, like they yeah. can't go to American Tower right now and get a deal. You, you must American be crazy. American Tower is a realtor. They're a realtor. That's what they no, are. Real I'm, the real estate space for what? For what? For the, for the telcos. But the telcos own a spectrum that they bought from the government worth right. hundreds of billions of dollars. Matter of fact, trillions. We'll just drop it at that. Yeah. There's a reason T Mobile bought Sprint for the spectrum. American Tower is just the hardware, man. Listen, man. Yeah, it's the, real it's the real estate. It's the real estate. It's the real estate. It's, it's, it, it is the cellular real estate. I agree. And you acting like they cannot get into that environment, Aki? Matt, Stop. Matt, Matt, first of all, they can Apple can you like you said, Apple controls the market, correct? No, they control some of the market. Real the real people that control the market is BlackRock. Let's keep it a buck. You know, 10 trillion assets under management. But what I'm saying is this. You said the Fed, what the Fed does doesn't impact the economy. Every corporation has debt. That debt interest rate. Is 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 uh tied to no, you're talking okay okay uh, let me be clear consumer economy well, it's gonna affect the businesses it's gonna affect the business, business way the more corporation. than the consumer the consumers work for the Aki, corporation Aki, Aki, what are people doing right now they're spending right inflation at all time highs they're still spending on what they want to spend on correct what in what in people's lives well, right now money? are really changing well, people well, people still money? going to the grocery store hold on well, hold on people money? still going to hold, hold. I think people still go in the grocery store. They're still getting what they want to get. They're still going out to the mall. They're still getting what they want to get. People are still traveling. All right. People, people, people still taking out loans to go to school, right? College is coming up. People still taking out loans to go to school. They don't care what the rate is right now. They're going to go. That's not, they're not choosing um, one school from another. They're not doing that. They're going to the school they want to go to and they're going to pay for it later. They don't care. Hmm. Okay, Matt. So if things were so rosy, right? <laughs> why would the states be giving out tax credits or UBI, you know, for children, of, of parents who have children? Why would they be doing that? Yeah, but okay, they could be doing that, but we don't even know the specifics around that. What? Okay, Aki, they could be giving out five hundred dollars though, but they can be make, doing out five hundred dollars for people who make it fifteen thousand dollars a year, twenty thousand dollars a year. They can do it for them. That's, that, does that really help the overall like economy? No, it helps a percentage of the economy. It ain't helping everybody. We don't. I don't know the specifics around that. Well, it's probably that, that tax credit. But the the point is, is this: the the people, us on this call, work for corporations, right? The corporations work for the shareholders, right? The corporations have debt. That gets, that's not a fixed rate. That gets adjusted every time a fair raises the rate or drops it down. So a corporation's debt payment could go up a couple million or a couple billion if the fair raises the rates or if it comes down, right? And that debt they have to pay comes off their balance sheet, you know, minus the revenue. So it can make or break a corporation based on the federal funds rate. And that corporation then may have to lay off, say individuals, us on the call, then they're gonna save the money that they was paying us and they can apply it to the debt payment, which then makes things look rosy. There's a reason Disney, when they said they are furloughing all their workers in COVID, the stock popped 
fifteen dollars. Mm. Because the shareholders saw, oh, they don't have to pay those people anymore. So think of the corporations as an organism that's going to protect itself by any means. So should the environment get to where it's not uh, conducive, they will start sh shedding parts of itself to survive for the future. And that's what's happening. That's why these companies, that is why Apple saying they're not going to be spending. That's why Microsoft saying, yo, the, the, for, the FX is, is, is going to hurt our earnings. Plus Russia situation. Like, they just telling us to be upfront. So when these earnings look like trash, we'd be like, oh man, it's not that bad. But it's still trash and they're still feeding it to us. But we thinking it's like, you know, for the mignon when it's not. And then th that work, and the problem is, this is going to get worse, not better. Again, look up the G7 countries and see, are things getting better over there? Because those are trade partners. They're the people we call brothers and sisters. But if they economy looking funny, our economy looking funny, oh, it's, it's, all, it's all about to fall down. Now, this is not to say that, and again, we're not attacking Microsoft and Apple's business practices, anything else. We just we just saying the environment that's upon us is not conducive a positive growth. Yeah. That's it. And Apple already came out yesterday saying, like, yo, yeah, we gotta we gotta cut, make some cuts. That's not growth. Call it what you can call it what you want, trimming the fat, you know, tightening up the belt. No, like that's not growth. That's reduction. That's protection for mm -hmm. uncertainty. Because see, I'm sorry, did the Ukraine war somehow get better? Because since February 24th, you know, it looked like it's been getting a lot worse. Yeah. And, 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 and you know what? This ain't even no, no shot at nobody, but real talk, this climate change situation is about to change the whole dynamics of the world itself which it can impact economies at scale. Like UK at 104 hitting high records, that's not normal. I mean, the electric grid gotta work probably 20, 30% harder. Oh, if they were slacking on the upgrades, boom, that's power outages and then boom, you see the domino effect, right? No power, no commerce. That's true. Cause who's spending cash? I mean, who who's sending normal mail? Who trying to make a phone call? But I digress. I'll leave y'all with that. I yield my time. Matt, thank you very much for the the uh the mental judo. Oh, always, always. Still sharp and still. That's what we do. All right. So, you know, tomorrow we got. You know, a great conversation, y'all. Great sparring match. Steel sharp and steel, iron sharp and iron. Um, so tomorrow we got uh, Tesla. Um, tomorrow we got Tesla. We got ASML. Uh, we got Alcoa. We got United Airlines. We got uh, Discover. Right? So those are the, some of the names to watch out for tomorrow. All right. So Tesla's aftermarket, ASML's pre-market, United Airlines is aftermarket, Alcoa's aftermarket, right? And um, yeah, we'll be back. We'll be back at it again tomorrow. We'll see how the price action looks tomorrow. See how we trade overnight. I think the ECB makes their decision tomorrow as well. So I have a few things to talk about, y'all, right? Appreciate everybody if you continue to tap in consistently. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. You know, hit the notification bell and, um, you know, just continue to get better, man. Just continue to keep studying, keep learning, keep researching and become better in all areas. All right. All right. Peace and abundance, y'all. Peace and abundance.